Welcome back to another episode of the Iron Pulse Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about why you should document your fitness journey. I think I have a few reasons, Kyle has a few reasons too. I don't know. Do we really document our fitness journey that much? I think um, I think we I did, did a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. I think Not it's... as much as I would have liked to. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that that's one of the things we missed out on, um, especially nowadays. I mean... Gosh, man, so many people throw it up on TikTok or Instagram and whatever social media that they use, and all of a sudden they just get a lot of clout from it. But yeah, for sure. That's, uh, I guess, that's the name of the game nowadays. If you want to just work for yourself and be a social media influencer like everybody does, we used to grow up and want to be like real things, like professional sports player. Now people grow up wanting to be social media influencers or OnlyFans stars. Times have changed, man, and we're only 25. <laughs> that just puts it into perspective. They, yeah, they've definitely yeah. changed. But anyway, before we get too off topic, uh, let's go into why we think that you should document your fitness journey. I, you know, I, I think other than what Kyle and I just had, it's a little bit of regret. Um, we both did it a little bit, but not to the extent of what you know we probably should have or could have done. Um, you know, sp- speaking from personal experience, I know that I didn't do it nearly as much as I should have because I've been up and down, left and right. I've been all over the spectrum. I m- might have like, I don't know, 10 pictures. <laughs> like it's nothing crazy. And they're all on my Instagram. So whatever I had is, is on my Instagram. Maybe I have like two videos too because I know back back when I was really big into it, maybe like four or five years ago, images were more, you know, prevalent, more, you know, people wanted to see images more than videos. I think videos have only come to light in the recent year or two in terms of like, yes, let's push this. Um, I think it has to do a lot with just attention span and your choice of social media. Um, But yeah, I mean, I would say regret is definitely one thing. If you document your fitness journey, you want to see where you came from. You don't want to look back and be like, wow, I mean, I was, you know, 200, 300 pounds or I was 100 pounds going to, uh, you know, 150, whatever the case is. Um, and you completely did a 180, but you don't really, you you, ha- you don't have the, the journey documented. You haven't taken any pictures, any videos, or, um, you know, basically you didn't write anything down. Um, just logging it as you go, it, it can help you stay motivated, I think too. So Kyle, what do you, what do you think over there? Um, yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the same page with you. I didn't really document too much. I have, you know, pictures from when I first started lifting, but I really wish I took more videos. Um, I wish I, you know, tracked progress on, on lifts and stuff or like wrote down milestones, um, recorded milestones. Like I really just have a couple pictures from when I started and then, you know, over the couple course of the months, but it was, it was just pictures really. Um, but I mean, documenting really, like Cam said, helps you keep you motivated. Like you'll look back on them and think, wow, you know, I'm so glad I did this or like, look at where I'm at now. And it just gives you motivation to keep it going. Um, you know, having long-term goals that can help you stay focused and documenting your process towards those goals. And even the short-term goals too, is also super important. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's good to see where you were, right. Especially you, you talked outside of taking pictures or your weight, basically, um, you talked about your lifts, right. And how much weight you were putting up per lift, um, that's one thing that I didn't really talk about is actually logging what you're doing in the weight room or in the gym. So this, this can tell you where you started, where you've been, where you're going, are you making progress? Are you not making progress? Um, you know, or are you more tired one day than the other day? Like what's going on? Did you change up your sleeping pattern, your eating pattern? Like it can all, you can, you can ask these questions based off of if you lifted the same amount more or less, um, one, you know, one day versus the next. So, you know, that's a good point too. I didn't really think about that. I was thinking about it more from a, uh, you know, a a video or photography standpoint, but actually documenting in a notebook, like what you're doing from exercises and your routine and changing it up. I mean, that'll definitely help you stay on track. It'll help you, um, change stuff. If you're getting complacent too, you'll know like, okay, I'm doing more weight here but I'm not feeling like nearly as tired this day. So maybe I need to add something up, change it up. I'm not really as fatigued as I used to be, which is good, but maybe my body's not being 
tested as much as it should be. So, right. yeah. So, you know, I think that other than keeping you motivated, like this allows you to step out of your comfort zone too. Um, I think that personally you should have some form of documentation for yourself. I don't necessarily think that you need to share it with everybody because I know that some people, they do better if they keep something like this, like a diet or whatever it is, like close to their chest. They don't want to tell anybody because they don't want to have that like, well, if I fail, if I don't hit my weight, then, you know, people are going to just constantly ask me about it. Hey, are you still doing this? You still doing that? You still lifting? And so I get that that can be very annoying. Um, But there's also other people on the other side that they use it as motivation. Like they'll make the post on day one. And then they'll continue to post and they'll get into a rhythm and into a routine and it'll help keep them accountable to actually continue, right? So documenting their process turns into that accountability piece to take it to the next level to keep going, right? You're out of your comfort zone now. You're motivated. uh, You know, you're taking that next step. So, and you got a lot of people, hopefully, that are backing you in your corner and you're obviously going to have some trolls because... What's a world without trolls, especially on the internet these days? So Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, man, other than that, I think that, you know, filming yourself is important. I think documenting yourself is important. Um, you're, you know, it, well, so outside of actually just documenting the process, we're just talking about filming. Like you can film yourself to see your form as well. So if you don't have anybody that can give you pointers on your form, um, you can obviously fill yourself. That's just a quick side note, but I know gyms are becoming, well, some of them are becoming more film friendly. They're turning with the ages. Other ones are not. And it's basically because maybe their audience is um, maybe a, a little bit of a different demographic. And a lot of people still complain, well, I don't want you filming me. I don't want, you know, they just go crying to you, go crying to everybody else. But it's one thing if you just film yourself. It's obviously something else. If It's something different if you film somebody else. So don't go in there filming somebody else. If you're going to document a process, document your process. You don't need to be documenting anybody else's. So just a little side note. Um, other than that, Kyle, do you, do you have any other reasons why people should document their fitness journey? Yeah, just as a closing thought for me, I think uh... – another positive to documenting is is that it'll show you which things might be working and which things aren't working so for example if you're tracking your progress on a specific lift and you're plateauing at a certain weight and you can't seem to break it after you know a month or two of trying the same thing over and over again since you documented it you can go back and you know change something you you know what you've been doing you've tracked it you can add tweaks or changes or change the rep scheme or whatever it might be to try to break that plateau and you know, it's hard to do that and think back to what you did for the last month or two if you don't have it written down somewhere or or tracked somewhere. So, um, yeah, it's important to understand what you're doing and track it. Yep. No, I would agree with that. So we can wrap this episode up here. Um, next week's episode, we may be doing a forging the brand, just discussing what's going to be happening for the rest of the year. Keep everybody up to date. To those of you that listen, you'll get the uh, you'll get the drop on Iron Pulse for the rest of the year before anybody else does. So, um, as always, we appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to listen. We hope that you found some value. Please feel free to share it with your friends and family. You can come be a part of the Envision Nation Discord. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Pinterest at Official Iron Pulse. I think we got a TikTok in there nowadays too, right, Kyle? Yep. <laughs> But don't worry, if you prefer email, we've still got you covered. You can subscribe to the Iron Pulse Report by visiting shopironpulse.com. And remember, no matter what you do, be all in.